First movement we do in our movement screen is breathing. So learning, like I said before, it's the first thing you do is when you're born and it's the last thing you do before you leave this earth. So common dysfunctions, when we talk about breathing, it, we mean a proper abdominal breath. So if you imagine taking a breath, it's like you're filling a pitcher with water. So it starts from the bottom here and then raises up. And it's not just out, it's all around. So it's from here, here, and here. So if you take a proper abdominal breath, it should be expansion of the diaphragm or contraction of the diaphragm. Breath comes in from here and then up into the chest. One of the most common dysfunctions we see, not only in training, but also on the chiropractic side, is a lot of very heavy chest and neck breathing. If you're fatigued or get tired and you start to breathe and you notice these muscles are starting to work, these are your secondary muscles of inspiration. They're trying to help you get in air because you're unable to use your diaphragm. So this is one of, one of the easiest ways we can assess how you breathe is to simply have you lie on the ground. And this picture here on the left is probably, is the most common dysfunction we see with breathing and that is the ribcage flare. So if you lie on your back and you look down at your chest and you see your ribcage poking out, that means you're not engaging your diaphragm to take a proper abdominal breath. If you can't take a proper abdominal breath, you're unable to properly brace your spine, which like we talked about before, is your, probably your most important asset as far as any kind of training or sporting event. You want to protect your lumbar spine your spine in general, but lumbar spine is the most common issue we see, and being unable to take a proper abdominal breath and brace is extremely important for stabilizing that. So that picture on the right kind of demonstrates that most common dysfunction. So the picture to the farthest left on that, on that right picture is nice neutral posture, trunk is braced. As you lose that ability to engage that rib cage down, neutral position, you start to kind of lean back like this, rib cage pokes out, not to this exaggeration, um, but this for a general idea. So you lean back and you start to compress everything in the back of here. Now why is that important for riders with low back pain? Think about how many times on the horse you're bouncing up and down and have to stabilize. If you're not stabilizing with your, your trunk here, with the musculature to support yourself to stand up, you're resting on the bony structures. The body's smart. It's going to stabilize you whatever way it can. So if you're not going to use your trunk to actually engage that, it's going to go to the next thing it knows, which is hinging on the bony structures at the back of the lumbar spine. So now you're resting bone on bone in the back, compressing that, then add in the compressive forces and the shooting forces of bouncing up and down and stabilizing the horse, and that just leads to quicker degeneration and more back pain in the long run. So this is really our foundation of our program, and we try to make sure every single athlete or individual we work with understands this and is properly able to brace and stabilize the spine.